Oh, hello there, and welcome to my beach. You see, I've been indoors the past couple of weeks playing just the weirdest video game. So I wanted to get outside, you know? See some, see some of the world. Reconnect with society. Drink some Monster. You see, the thing about this game is that much of the enjoyment of playing it, especially like the first half, comes from figuring out what the hell you're playing. And my fear is, is that a lot of people are gonna go rushing around the internet, reading a bunch of reviews, and have that early mystery spoiled. So I'm hoping you got to me first, because we're gonna go zero spoilers on this. No story spoilers whatsoever. I'm gonna walk around the gameplay as much as humanly possible. And any gameplay footage you see is gonna be very vague and from the early chapters of the game. All right, we got a deal? Grab your bridge, baby. We're going in. Oh boy, that's Stranding. Where to start? Uh, I have no idea how anyone's gonna review this game. I don't know how anyone's gonna score this game. And I don't even know if this game was fun. Did I enjoy it? Parts? Am I glad to have played it? Absolutely, it's one of the weirdest games I've ever played. Certainly the strangest big budget game I've ever played. At times, the core gameplay is so boring and so monotonous and difficult. And a lot of the times, it's challenging and, and beautiful and heartfelt. And then it's boring again for a while. And then there are these other levels that... All right, it's gonna be hard to talk around this. What would Kojima do? Aha, metaphor. Okay, so Death Stranding, it's kind of like a pilgrimage. You play as an extreme sports mailman and spend most of your time in this game walking on your own to a destination usually quite far away. There are big, impressive set pieces hidden in there, but the game mostly concerns itself with fetch quests. It's a slog, and sometimes it's boring, but there are also times where it's atmospheric and challenging. You're pulled along mostly by the promise of the story as layers of this fascinating world are peeled away, and you encounter new mysteries in this bizarre rendition of America. But like a pilgrimage, it's not really about the destination. It's more of a journey of discovery of sorts. This weird, twisted tale that plays out as you connect this broken world back together. And while these elements may be enough to keep some people playing, there are other elements of this game that are absolutely going to rub some people up the wrong way. All right, so you know in Skyrim when you kill your first dragon and you're so pumped and so happy because it, it was huge, and it doesn't matter that you don't have any arrows left, or you drank all your super mana juice, because you're gonna pick up these bones and sell them to some rube in solitude and get everything you've ever wanted. Well, you know when you actually pick up the bones and you, you put them in your whatever Skyrim bag and suddenly you're 200 over encumbered and you can't go anywhere and everything else in your bag you kind of need? You know how frustrating that is and how irritating that is? Well, get used to it. An encumbrance isn't the only thing that's gonna turn some players off. Like a pilgrimage, this game is incredibly repetitive. Locations are carbon copies of each other, interactions with NPCs follow a strict formula, and the menus are really cumbersome. But I found myself falling into a rhythm with most of this stuff and focusing on the part of gameplay that I actually enjoyed. The exploration, managing balance and stamina, and interactions, dare I say, the combat with the world's antagonists. And what's neat about a lot of this stuff is that you're kind of learning a lot of it on the fly. There's no simple frame of reference for how this game plays. There really, truly isn't a game like it. And for me, that wonder was a large part of why I kept coming back. A little bit of a note here. There is a difficulty scale in this game, but aside from that, there's a kind of an online component, like a shared reality kind of thing uh, that I won't get into the details on. But one thing worth noting is that while that was on, I guess, while I was connected to the internet, certain parts of the game were a little bit more trivial, less challenging. There was this section I played in the middle, maybe three of the chapters, uh, where I wasn't connected to the internet, and it was a lot harder. It was also more isolating and lonely, and I'm not sure if I would have played the entire game like that, but I really enjoyed playing that section like that. So, I don't know, if you're finding the game a little bit too easy, or you feel like you'd enjoy the solitude a little bit more, maybe disconnect from the internet. 
Just like Metal Gear Solid 5, the fingerprints of its creator are everywhere here, in the character names, themes, and the bizarre vocabulary of this world. Technically, it's a masterpiece, gorgeous visuals, a frame rate you could set your watch to, and stellar character and object design by Yoji Shinkawa. But guess what? You're gonna watch a lot of cutscenes. Well acted and directed, with some really clever cinematography of parts, but often plodding and bursting with exposition. And long. Sometimes really long and you might watch it again from a slightly different perspective. Dead Stranding reminds me of like an art house movie or a concept album. It's well made with a lot of care and attention and a singular vision, but it's hard to blindly recommend it to strangers. It's kind of like a Lars von Trier movie. I know I enjoy watching them, I'm not sure if they're good, and it's not exactly the type of film that I often recommend to other people. So often as a reviewer you feel like a matchmaker, and I guess if you like going on long walks and getting caught in the rain, maybe Death Stranding is the game for you. But there's so much about this game that has the potential to push people away, and oddly enough that's kind of what's refreshing about it. Death Stranding is one of the best games I have played this year for reasons I don't fully understand and the longer I think about it, the more I think I enjoy playing it. This game might be a masterpiece, but it might also be many people's least favorite Hideo Kojima game. I have absolutely no way of telling. I don't know, I enjoyed a lot of it and I found a lot of it boring, but I kinda like that I found a lot of it boring. It felt okay that it was monotonous at times, because it felt like that's the game that they were trying to make. Not a roller coaster, but a pilgrimage. Not necessarily about the destination or the journey, but the discovery that happens along the way. And also the mail and Guillermo del Toro and babies in jars. I think what I like most about this game is that it's not a game that anyone asked for or expected. It's a game made by a team of creative people using their creative freedom to make something totally unique. And I don't know about you, but for me personally, at this stage in my video game lifetime, I really value things that are unique and weird and sometimes boring. So I don't know if Death Stranding is the game for you. What I do know for sure is that it's exactly the game it wanted to be. And that game is like nothing else you will have ever played before and perhaps will never play again. And if that alone is worth the cost of entry for you, like it certainly was for me, then you should jump right in, BB.